Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Now, this is a new week, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, God has a special plan for our lives. I've always told you this, that the reason he sends his word is because of his love. God would not send his word to a people he doesn't love. So the fact that you're coming across this broadcast today is a sign that God loves you. And so I pray that he will give you understanding even as you listen further in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, first and foremost, like the Lord has commanded us to do on this broadcast, we need to call for that daily bread. It's a demand you make from the Lord for something he has already planned to give to you daily. The Bible says he daily loads us with benefits. And Jesus said we should ask, give us this day our daily bread. That word daily bread shows that God gives it on a daily basis. So the Lord commanded us on this broadcast, every day you will lead my people to make that demand. Not because God forgets, but because we need to build in us the consciousness that we have daily benefits, daily bread to receive from Him. So if you are releasing your faith with me right now, join me now as we make this demand. Say with me, say, Father, I demand now for my daily bread. It's coming to me and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, what does daily bread mean? It means everything you need to sustain you well today. It can be wisdom, it can be finances, it can be protection. Everything you need to sustain you well today. It has been released to you right now because you have asked in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man. Now, we are in the month of June and the Lord has said He's releasing an unction upon our life. He's releasing a special grace upon our lives to make us witnesses. We will indeed be His witness. Now, I remember on the 1st of June, we were dealing, we were having our prayer and fasting meeting. Now, if you've never joined us, plan for the next month or not plan for the next month's edition to join us. That's, that'll be the month of July. Don't miss it. Every first of the month, we spend that day to fast and pray. Praise God. Now then, while we were praying on the first, the Lord gave us a specific word that we must put in our mouths this month especially this month. And that doesn't mean at the end of the month, say, okay, I'm done. So, no, everything God tells you is building and it keeps building. So, two things the Lord said we should keep our focus on this month is number one, the statement he gave us said, I shall not die. Now, you hearing me right now, I want you to make that declaration and look, look if you can, go write it down. Write it boldly, not just writing a piece of paper somewhere. Write it boldly where you would see it every day. So he says, number one is I shall not die. And number two is I will never walk in a lie. Very profound um, statement he's gotten us to make there. I shall not die. Can you just make that declaration with me with your whole heart and mean it? Are you ready? Let's go say, I shall not die. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the second one says, I shall not walk in a lie. I will not walk in a lie. I will not deceive myself to walk in a lie. I will not get in situations that are not true and believe them. I will not get into an investment based on a lie. I will not get into a relationship based on a lie. 
No, 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 no. Now, when we make this declaration, we are setting up ourselves for the Lord to protect us. Confession, it's very important. You don't just say, I, I know what I'm saying in my heart. No. Saying it with your mouth, it's very important. Because that is when it comes into force. That is when it comes into being. That statement in your heart carries no power until you are able to pronounce or profess it with your mouth. Now, when you profess it with your mouth, first of all, you are showing that you truly believe this. And it makes all the angels around you know what you're talking about. Angels will never know what's in your heart until you speak it out. Now, when God gives you a word, remember this. He has already given the angels that same word to watch out for when it's coming out from your mouth. So Jesus told the disciples, what I tell you in the ear, shout it on the house top. There is a reason for that. Because the angels are expecting those who are the heirs of salvation. They don't know you. There is no mark on your head that you're a child of God. There is no special complexion that depicts you as a child of God. No, angels don't recognize you just by face. Angels know you by the words that you speak. Angels know you by the words that you speak. I want you to, I want that to sink in your heart. Angels know you by the words that you speak. John said, he said, him whom God sent speaks God's word. So angels are, the earth, hallelujah, you know, sometimes. The, the earth is full of angels. Everywhere. The Bible says we have, we have come into an innumerable company of angels. They outnumber. Angels outnumber the human beings on the face of the earth. Now that's because they are not dragging space with you, but they are there. Imagine if you have 7 billion or 7 point something billion people on earth. Now just think about how many angels you have on the face of the earth. But you see, they don't know you. In the midst of the, of the people that are on the earth, angels are looking for a set of people who the Bible said they are sent for those, they are sent for to help those who shall be heirs of salvation. So God sends us into the world. And how do we know God sends us into the world? Because of his word that he has given to us. So if you keep quiet, angels will not recognize you. But when you begin to speak what God has put in your heart, then wherever you find yourself, angels recognize you. And what will they do when they recognize you? They begin to walk with you. They begin to see to it that you are protected. They begin to see to it that you are okay. That everything you need within their domain, you get it. That's how angels relate with us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now this week, I'm going to be sharing with you on something I titled the one who will be blessed. The one who will be blessed. Now, it's still a continuation of what we've been talking about, you know, before now. But this, this we're going into another dimension of this. So, I'm sharing with you what I titled the one who will be blessed. The one who will be blessed. Praise God. God wants to bless you. He, he, he's a blesser. And you see, um, there is something people don't understand about God and how he operates. Jesus made certain statements that you need to think deeply on and then bring it into light with the character and the behavior of God. For example, Jesus said, many are called but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, it simply means many are called to be blessed, but then only few are chosen to be blessed. Now, why would God call many and then choose only a few? 
It's not because God was doing random sampling. So he called many and then he now starts with no. You see, the reason few are chosen is because the many, majority of the many that are called are not disciplined enough to wait through the process to be chosen. To be called is an open invitation. Come and be blessed. But before that blessing is released upon your life, you've got to be prepared and ready for it. Because God is not going to cast what is important to people who don't take things seriously. You see that? So very importantly, you must understand this if you want to be blessed by God. There are certain things you must understand about His person. There are certain things you must understand about His character. There are certain things you must understand how, about how He operates even the blessing. Something, I don't know if I have time for this, but it's important I show you as an example. First Samuel, first Samuel. Now you know the story of Saul that became King Saul. He, he, was, he was a man who God just chose to be made king. So God just decided to pick him up as king. And God led him to Samuel. The people had asked God for a king. God said, okay, I'll give you one. Okay, so God chose Samuel to be made king. Now, you think that's a great thing. Of course it's a great thing for God to look around everybody, the whole nation, and decided to choose you to be the number one person in that nation. That's not a light thing. Praise God. But now, we'll see something in... 1 Samuel chapter 13. I'm just going to read this. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I, I just want to go straight to the verse. I don't want to read the whole story. Verse 13. 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 13. Now, this is Samuel speaking. You know, the story Samuel had told Saul, Look, wait for seven days. After seven days, I'll come and offer the sacrifice. Now, he was king already. Saul was king already. Now, so Samuel gave him that instruction. And then he waited as Samuel instructed him. Samuel didn't show up. And then he forced himself and offered the sacrifice. And then Samuel showed up and began to talk with him. Now, look at verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now, this is where I'm going. He's already king already. God has made him king already. He said, for now, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. This was the intention of God. He has made him king already, but he had not blessed him with kingship yet. So he says, now, for the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. He's king already. But God says, I had a plan for you. See, many are called. He was called to be a king. Yes, but he wasn't chosen to be blessed with the kingship. But, but he still remained king. Yes, but, but that's not the blessing. See, you may get a job. It doesn't mean God has blessed you with that job yet. You may get some finances. It doesn't mean God has blessed you with finances yet. Now, I'm going to explain that during within the week as we go on on this broadcast. But I want you to get this. The man who will be blessed must prepare himself for the blessing. The blessing doesn't come randomly. The blessing doesn't come by confessing. No, no. I know you have been taught. Declare it, say it, and it shall be. Hey, listen. We have a God who thinks and he relates with us. He is the giver. The blessing is not automatic. The blessing is giving. It is giving. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And if it is giving, 
then someone is behind it. And this one who's behind it, he's a rational being. He thinks, he decides. Praise God. So I'm going to be sharing with you this week. So get your heart ready because I believe you want to be that one whom God will bless. So it's important you learn what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to operate? And the Spirit of God will cause you to walk in the path that will bring the blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you today. That the Lord will guide you. That the Lord will open his heart to you. His loving heart. And I pray that you will find in yourself the stamina and the ability to stand in faith to be blessed by God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a best day ever today in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye.